Hi there, my name is Linus Mel. I live in Southwestern Ontario, gardening zone 6A slash 5B, depending on how cold our winter gets. If you are a gardener in my zone, you'll probably notice that it's a lot colder now, so we can't really do much outside. And this would be the perfect time to start planning for next year. So what have I been doing? I've been doing a lot of shopping. And um, this is just a portion of what I have collected in the last, oh, maybe five months. I have a lot. I have a lot to show. I don't remember what seeds I bought. So this will be the chance for me to remember what I've actually bought and show you what each company's offer. Maybe not all because I, I didn't buy the whole catalog, but I can tell you about the experience of shopping from their website, how the package, how the seeds are packed. Uh, if I remember maybe how long it took for them to arrive. Um, and yeah, just basically use me as a guinea pig. If you live in Canada and you want to order from out of province out of country so so you have an idea of what you're gonna get all right let's start with um, Baker Creek heirloom seeds now I put two orders in uh, I think so this one was was mailed October 27 and the other one was uh, yeah so just a month apart don't judge. You know, you, oh, at least for me, when I start shopping for seeds, I just put everything in my cart. And then um, once I check out, I get shocked by the, I get shocked by the total amount. And so, you know, I kind of whittle down which ones I really like. But then if you're like me, when you're bored, a few weeks later, you start thinking, well, maybe I should have bought those seeds. So, um, so yeah, I did two orders. I'll show you what the, this was from the October. Oh, this was the newer one. I'll show you the first one I got. First order I got from them. I've ordered from them before last, uh, last spring or this past spring. Uh, in terms of germination, I think most of them germinated. Uh, the only one that I remember not doing well was the Rubecchia. It's a Hara Rubecchia. And the, um, it was in some type of, it was a Heather Queen Agastaki. Anyway, uh, what's this? Okay, so they do, they're, they're pretty quick in terms of, um, uh, shipping. Uh, I ordered it October 19th and it was shipped October 27th. And um, probably a week later, it arrived in Canada. Is that good? good? What I like about Baker Creek is that you can see the pictures on their, uh, on their packages. They also have the germination uh, time, the ideal temperature for germination, how deep you can, you should sow each seed, how the recommended plant spacing in the landscape, if they're frost hardy, and the type of sun exposure they would need for the plant to grow properly. So. I got Swan Lake Salvia. I do like Salvias because they're pollinators. They're pollinator attractant. They attract pollinators. They and they don't and rabbits tend to leave them alone. Is this perennial? It's perennial to zones four to eight. So if I can make it live. Well, I'm in mean, zone six, so it should be fine. And it's also good for containers. 
if I want to put them in containers this year. If you're zone six, you should plant perennials that are two zones above you. So just so they have a chance to survive the winter. So I got Salvia Swan Lake. I have another Salvia Rose Rhapsody. Uh, this one is perennial three to nine. Perennial zones three to nine. And both of them are frost hardy. So if I sow them early, then I can, they're pretty, pretty good at germination. The salvias, I'm not sure if they're the same type. Uh, it did sow some salvia. It's um, Transylvania cloud salvia, but I sowed them in last year or last spring indoors. And by the time I'm ready, I was ready to plant them out, they were like huge. So if I can get them early to start, I could plant them out before the last frost and they should they should do well. Hopefully. Uh, so I figured I could do white and pink. I also have three varieties of stocks. Uh, these are Japanese the Japanese varieties. Uh, they got the as asa no asa no kagayaki and it is apricot looking blossom. Well let me just read you the uh, in the description. These hazy apricot blooms are reminiscent of the sunrise dream golden hour. Strong thick stems are smothered in ruffled petals and a waft and waft a gorgeous club like fragrance. I like that verb waft. This single stem variety requires a chilly period and therefore should be planted in late winter and early spring. It's not suitable for a late spring or summer planting. So okay, so another cold hardy annual that I'm looking forward to plant. This one is Chanter Alto Red Stocks. It's a early flowering type, has the beautiful ruffled petals and cherry red. It should reach 32 inches tall, producing multiple branches. Oh, that's probably why I picked it. The blooms emit an enchanting club-like fragrance and the flowers are edible and quite delicious. Hopefully the rabbits don't eat it. Um, I'll be planting them in my um, in my fence area anyway. It can be used as a natural food dye flavoring. So I probably shouldn't uh, try to stain my clothes with that one. And then Haruno Kagayaki. So I guess they're the same, maybe they're the same breeder. Because this is Asano Kagayaki. This is Haruno Kagayaki. And this one is more pink. Or rosy pink blooms. I already have a. Uh, already, I grew stalks last year and have different varieties, but I planted them too late. It was already June by the time I had a chance to plant them. And with stalks, I think you should be. I should be planting them early, 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 early spring, maybe even by March, just so they have time to root establish their root before the summer hits. Anyway, next I have Sunflower, Astro Gold. I like the look of shredded petals. Looks like they're rocks, the rock stars of sunflowers. The wild cousins, you would, I would say. Multi-branching. So I probably should be planting it really close to each other, because otherwise they might brush out too much and then that'll be hard to make arrangements with. Right. That's good to know. Apricotta. This has been gaining a lot of attention in social media. It is a tender annual so I should be planting this after frost, after our last, last frost. And um, 
It's, it's described as pink lemonade. I'm looking forward to see what that looks like. Oh, I also have got another uh, stock. It's called Beauty Salmon Pink. It's an early flowering type from Japan. Yeah, same combination. Well, so let's see what I have. I got uh, a really red. Oh, did I buy? Why? Hi. <sighs> well, does that look like salmon pink to you? It looks like red in this picture anyway. And so is this. Salmon pink versus red. But this is rosy pink and apricot. So we'll see. I also got another Cosmo variety. It's a Japanese Hero Cosmos. So it's pastel shades of yellow and cream with rosy and peachy undersides. Oh. And it goes up to four feet, four feet tall. I did plant a Cosmo similar. Well, it's a yellow Cosmos. It's called Stanthos. But it only grew really short. So I want, I bought this one because it's supposed to grow up to four feet tall, which means I could cut them for long, longer stems. The Xanthos ones, they're nice in the landscape, but if I wanted to use it as a cut flower, um, it, the, the, the stems were just too short. Let's see, I got some. I got another Agastaki. I really like Agastakis. Is it Agastash or Agastaki? I'm calling it Agastaki just because um, they're easy to grow. You can winter sow them. That was just what I'm planning to do. And oh, it's only perennials, it's only stuff. And but anyway, I think uh, my little microclimate and my fence area garden. I think I can grow this to zone. I, I think I can overwinter it. So I will wait. I'm confused. It says perennials in zone seven to 10, but the, at the bottom in the planting instructions, it says perennial zones four to 10. <sighs> Maybe that's why I bought it. Whether it grows or not, whether it survives the winter or not, I'll plant it anyway. Because, like I said, I have. I have a little bit of a microclimate in my fenced area. So maybe they'll survive after winter. Who knows? All right, Aster, Matsumoto, Matsumoto Blue Aster. 90 days, okay. Hmm. But it's not frost hardy, so I will be planting this after our last frost. Now, I love dahlias, but they're kind of in the, well not, yeah, they're drama queens. If they don't get the right conditions, They'll, just, they'll let you know right away. There's no like, there's no shyness. There's like, okay, good right here. They're more like, I'm dying. That's how I see plants. Anyway, what am I saying? So asters. The reason I didn't plant asters this year was because I was afraid of the whole, because I'm afraid of aster yellows. That's spread by leaf hoppers. Now, this is my first time, first full year of gardening. So I didn't really know if we, if I had leaf hoppers in my garden, but being in the garden this summer, I didn't really notice anything. So in my mind, I'm safe to plant some, some asters next year. I was missing a lot. I was missing blues in the fall. Uh, I think the only blue I had 
was uh, Brualia, which is just little tiny dainty little blue flowers. And also some Scaviosa, but that was more like purple instead of blue. So with Matsumoto blue, it's it should go reach 26 inches tall. So a fairly decent um, plant of stem, stem length and two inches of bloom. So okay, so it's nice. it would be a nice accent to include with the dahlias in the fall. That's why I chose them. Another interesting one is a perennial. It's a love parade yarrow. And what I like about yarrows is that they're kind of lacy and, and then they're perennial too. Um, the only thing is that I thought they'd be rabbit resistant, but no. The rabbits in my area seems to munch on the the foliage, so I would have to plant these inside the fence area. But it's pretty, it's pink. Another Agastaki. Now this one's perennials to zone six to nine. And it is apricot sprite. Why did I choose this? Well, it's orange and our house is painted blue, so I can just imagine this way in the wind and the blue in the background. So it would look nice, I think. Now, what is this? Grand, oh, a cat mint. Cat mint, Grand View cat mint. Perennials, zones three to seven. Their cat mint in general is very easy to grow. I tried doing winter sowing with them last year and they had good germination rates. So that this one has a different type of flower form. It looks like they're bigger. So that's probably why I chose them because I was interested in the flower form, mince form. Um, it just goes about one to two feet in height and one to one and a half feet wide. And rabbits tend to tend to leave them alone. I chose these ones. This one I'm excited about. It's the Takane Ruby Buckwheat. So if you are familiar with soba noodles, this is where they came from. I plan on using them as cover crops before on the new no dig bed that I um, made from the front. I don't know, maybe that's a little bit. Oh, it's got big seeds right there. What I was saying is that I was going to plant these first on a no dig garden bed that I just made this fall. So I'll plant these first. It's supposed to grow really quick, sprouts in 21 days. And apparently they start blooming in about 30 days. About six to eight weeks after sowing. So after it blooms, I'll cut them down, let the foliage die back before I plant um, I plant my sunflowers, tender annual stuff that I'm I'm planning on um, I'm planning for the fall. So ten so sunflowers, seniors, and uh, cosmos that are more in the fall color theme. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm excited about that. And then I also got some viola. Perennials to zone four to nine. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Florette showed maybe a few years ago how she grew violas that got long stems and Johnny Seeds also has some videos on varieties of violas that were able to grow long for us cut flowers. I'm going to see if this one works. I think the, the trick for the violas and pansies to have long stem length is to get them established before summer hits. 
because once summer hits, then they'll, if the roots are not established, then they will just um, not do well. But if they're established during the cold winter, then they, uh, if I leave them alone, they'll just elongate. But I don't know. We'll see. That's how my understanding is when it comes to getting long lens for the violas and pansies. So I'll give that a try. And it's kind of cool. It's like a purple with some yellows and it's got some cool striations in the, in the center there. Now with, with Baker Creek seeds, you get two free seeds per, I don't know how many orders, how many seeds, but I got two. One is uh, lettuce Merlot, the darkest red lettuce in existence. Hmm. That's interesting. And I also have some St. Valerie carrot. Nice. You can tell I'm excited about vegetables. Alright, uh, maybe I should separate that in my pile here. So let's do the most recent one I bought, uh, I ordered. So, not as much as the first order. There's this, uh, A florist on Instagram is La Musa. Let me just find out her name. Her, her, her name is Gabriella from La Musa de las Flores. In, in one of her posts, she showed different types of nasturtiums. And they, I thought they were really pretty. Now, I tried growing nasturtiums this year, just direct sun. They didn't really do well. It's probably just because I didn't put them in the right. The, right, the soil that I used wasn't that great. I don't know about now. So I won't ever buy that kind of soil again, potting soil again. So anyway, I got nasturtium, orchid cream, yeah, orchid cream nasturtium. It's not frost hardy, so it'll be planted after the last frost. And it's supposed to look like an uh, intricately painted orchid. Okay, that's interesting. The thing with uh, nasturtiums that I read about is that they like poor soil. Because if they have good soil, all they'll have is just the green leaves, which is not bad because I, I like the, the shape of the leaves as well. But if I'm going for the blooms, then I shouldn't be putting it in a rich, um, rich soil. I think I've got more nasturtiums that I've got here. Yep. So I've got another one called Cherry Rose Jewel. It's uh, 65 days maturity. It's hot pink with double blooms like candy for the eyes. Okay. High voltage color. And a perfect statement flower in the garden, bed borders, containers, or on the plate. Perfectly piquant and peppery edible flower. What does picuma taste like? Well, I guess I'll find out later. And in six months, maybe eight. I'll find out in eight months. Yeah. And then, I think I've got three varieties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have three varieties. The thing would be, so when I get interested in a flower, I try to by more variety, more than one varieties. Does that happen to you too? I think it's just me. So another one is Purple Emperor. Okay. Um, they all look the same. Well, this one is semi trailing. Makes compact vines, reaching 18 to 24 inches long. Lines of rose and bold burgundy blooms evolve into a vintage dusty rose hue throughout the season. Okay, maybe that exactly the same. Unless cherry rose, this is more like vintage rose. So, but anyway, even if I, even if they, they're probably okay 
plot together because they're similarly enough that maybe there's like a, a variation of the same shades in one pocket in the last gate. I think it'll, I think it'll be pretty. Mm. It will be pretty. Oh, and look at that. Another variety. Tip Top Mahogany Nasturtium. It's opulent blooms in rich mahogany. So brown, deep brown, niche, reddish brown. Um, yeah, okay. Brown, yeah, I think that would be. Where did I choose to? But, oh, okay, so maybe this, I was thinking of these two maybe in combination together. That's probably why I chose them together. And we have another nasturtium. I think that was the last nasturtium, so I have four nasturtiums. In addition to the other nasturtiums I bought last year that I haven't had the chance to plant. But we won't go through that. Celosia. Celosia. This is Chinese wool flower celosia. In in their website they they look like big pom poms. And uh I thought that would be interesting textural element in an arrangement. It is it's probably 14 to 21 days and blooms look like a tangle of colorful yarn. Got another viola. I have more than one viola here. Oh no, I missed another nasturtium. So I have four nasturtiums. This is Tip Top Alaska Salmon Nasturtium. And this one has the uh, variegated leaves. It looks really pretty. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I might I might plant this one on us uh, in the container on our steps. So like I said, because our house is blue. Blue and orange. Looks good together. But I got another viola. It's a, well, it's a dwarf viola. Hmm. Anyway, I'll plant it anyway, just to see how they do. And if they, they get long stems, then great. If not, at least they're pretty. There's this uh, Celosia mix called Rainbow Sherbet, Celo Sherbet Celosia. And it's a mix of, well, Sherbet tones. Look at that. So you got tangerine to apricot and strawberry. Never really grown celosia, although back in the Philippines we had celosia growing in the wild. And and I enjoyed I enjoyed playing with them with those blooms as a child. Now because we've got the other buckwheat, I was curious on the Wilfred Soba buckwheat. Apparently they're also deer. Apparently they're deer resistant, the buckwheats, or at least just this particular buckwheat. So maybe they're also rabbit resistant if the ears don't like them. But they're nice and pretty flowers. They can be used for cut flower arrangement and the bees like them. So I think it's a, hopefully they germinate well for me and they'll make good Good addition to the garden. Another one that I was uh, um, curious of is Tweedia. It's only perennial to zone set 10 to 11, so this will die in mine area, but I think it'll be okay as an annual. Um, it will grow to about two feet tall. So, uh, this one needs full sun, 8 to 12 hours. And it says it makes an excellent cut flower. Something blue in a cut flower arrangement is interesting. It makes, it makes the colors pop. That's why I like using blue and I like having options when it comes to blue flowers. And, I, and this is not just the horticultural per, uh, blue term. I think it's real blue, so that would be interesting. 
Then your staff is toxic. So rabbits will lay them alone. They're smart enough. Now just like the other one, the other order that I did, I also received two packages. Well, not packages, two seed packets, three seed packets. This one is bok choy, right? I like bok choys. I can definitely use that. And this one is Mizuna. Okay, so salad. Brassica, it's a Brassica Benny Hushi Mizuna. I can't really describe, well, this is how they describe this particular variety. A newly developed Japanese heirloom. Japanese heirloom is newly developed. Okay. Nutritious purple stems and dark greens make a lovely contrast and the delicate flavor is unparalleled. Doesn't really tell me anything. But sure. Adapted to both extreme heat and cold. Small percentage of plants will have smooth mustard-shaped leaves. I guess we'll just have to find out what it tastes like. 